Bones are amazing things. They hold us up. They support us. They make us strong. But bones have other uses. In the past, bones were thrown by diviners, seeking out the mysteries of the future. Now the bones are cubes, made of plastic or resin. But they still reveal things to us as they fall from our fingers and rattle across the table. The story becomes clear. Welcome to Bone Thrower's Theater, an RPG actual play podcast. Welcome back to Bone Thrower's Theater, and we are playing Cthulhu Dark. My name is Aaron, and I am playing Jason Dalton. This is Jeremy playing Marsden Phoenix. This is Jeff playing I'm About to Die, Darius Milson. This is Ellie playing Bon Bolton. This is Jordan playing your worst nightmare. So you go to lay on the horn. The door gets ripped off your car. The steering wheel is grabbed and just pulled off of the column. I climb into the passenger seat and try to get out the other side. Go ahead and roll me one die. <clears throat> He's about to be Hang history. It. <laughs> What'd you get? Six. I got five. So you're able to scramble over. <laughs> Do you drive an automatic or a manual? Automatic. Good. You're able to scramble over the emergency brake. <laughs> well, I mean, I rolled a six. Yeah. So that point, I would have said stick. <laughs> Harder for the other person to get across. <laughs> So you are able to get across to the other side. And remember, you're at an angle. You're at like a... That made it easier to get over the uh, center console. Yeah. Okay. You pop the door open and you flop out onto the ground. Yep. Sounds like you're about to start running. Mm-hmm. I don't think you would roll two dice to start running because you're a history professor, not a gym teacher. Yeah. One dice it is. Five. Three. The steering wheel comes whipping past you. It hits the sidewalk and does a weird bounce and flies through the window of the next door house. I am bolting as far and as fast as I can till I can't bolt no more. You were bolting? No, that's fine. <laughs> you stole my thunder, sir. I was going to make the same joke. <laughs> so at this point, you're successful in... You're not going to be able to run far. Not with a husky build. How far do you want to go? Five blocks. Mm. Roll me one die. Six. What? I told you. So you're able to run for quite a good amount of distance. Stop about six blocks away. Just kind of... <gasps> at the, like the beginning of the sub-development. Have you ever driven down in Virginia where they have nothing but like the two lane highways on each side mm-hmm. yeah and they're like they go at like 55 miles an hour I just see my car fly through the air <laughs> okay oh. no. go ahead and roll a die to dodge your car <laughs> dodge your car <laughs> it's not a Chevy it's a Dodge <laughs> Five. four I dive off to the side and roll getting away from the crushing impact of my vehicle slamming nose first into the ground next to where I was. Your car continues out into the intersection and it promptly gets T-boned. Good thing I wasn't in it. (laughs) I am going to... You hear the clopping of boots coming up right behind you. Yes or no? No! No! (laughs) No! (laughs) Answer invalid. You can see TV man reaching out for you. Like these tendrils start snaking out towards you and all of a sudden out of nowhere like the skin and the cloth on the back of his coat just kind of shred and these giant nasty looking back wings pop out over his shoulder blades and they like reach out for you and they've got like bat claws on the end of them i'm going to uh stop petrified in fear go ahead and roll them inside that Two. What were you at? I was at five. Okay. You tell him to stop rolling sixes. <laughs> right. <laughs> you will be assimilated by the Yaga society. You're petrified? Yeah. I'm just... I can't even speak. 
It grabs you with the arms, with the arms of the human, and it wrapping the tendrils around your body. Mm-hmm. And then it envelopes your face with the wings, mm-hmm. and it drags you close to the body, holding on to you as tight as it can. And a box truck comes up, and the back of the box truck opens, and the creature holding you jumps into the back of the truck and begins driving away. So let's go back to the hospital. How's your mom doing, Vaughn? The nurses have her back in the room. She's breathing steadily now. Good to hear. They tell you that they're going to keep her overnight for observation. It might be a while. She might have to go to rehab to get her strength back. That's fine as long as I can stay with her. Well, you can be here during visiting hours, but you can't stay at the hospital overnight. You do know how to take care of people. Okay. Are you still at the hospital? I mean, I was being interviewed by the the police officer, Phillips. I mean, if he's done with me, I'm still just kind of like... I would imagine Phillips is done with you by this point. Okay. Then I am actually going to do a little bit of research. Library doesn't close until 9. Okay, then I'm going over to the library. Okay. And I'm going to look up information about the TV tower that was mentioned by Ellis. Mm -hmm. He mentioned the laboratory near the TV tower. So I'm looking up who owns a laboratory near the TV tower. Okay. You're not finding any information about laboratories, but you do see a report of a small meteorological event that happened near the tower. Okay. Go ahead and make me a single roll. Yeah. And six. That's great. You know yeah. what that means? It means I need to roll insight? It's okay. I don't roll about four. <laughs> <laughs> he called it. <laughs> you suddenly have a vision of yourself. Oh. Yep. It's not going well. <laughs> As though someone were watching you through the monitor of the computer. So I'm going to grab the monitor. Is it flat screen? It's not a CRT. It's not Correct. A... It's a flat screen. Okay. I'm going to rip it off the computer and, and throw it. Okay. Go ahead and make me a twofer. With an insight? Not yet. Five. Okay. You are quite handily able to pull it off the wall and throw the computer screen through a nearby window. Okay. The librarians don't seem to be very happy about this. You'll thank me later. (laughs) And I get up and walk away. They actually have the security guard that's at the library escort you out. All right. Go ahead and go back to your wonderful assistant. Yeah, I'm going to go to the snack machine. Okay. Get some chips and cookies and... It's in the waiting area, right? In the emergency room? Correct. So... They mostly have healthy foods. I imagine that Phillips had left. Yes. And I'm like, uh, well, since this weird guy, Jason, whatever his name is, kind of just ditched the kid, I'm going to stick around for the kid. I mean, the kids need someone that they can trust. I mean, the kid's mom is in the hospital and this guy just rolled out. He's a beast. <laughs> Without Deuces. saying a word. Orange bug out. <laughs> what a boss. Well, he can take care of himself. So, Marston sees uh, Bond come out to the snack machine. He's like, hey, kid. There's nothing but healthy food in here. He kicks the machine. What do you want? Well, I was sticking around since your mom's in the hospital and your friend just kind of bugged out and left you here. So I was sticking around to make sure that you were okay. Listen, it's been kind of a long day. You don't have to tell me that. Do you have anything good to eat? We do. No, that was a joke. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, where is this? What? <laughs> what are the uh, like, I just did hospital computer you. starts rolling out? <laughs> Everyone jumped when he said The television yeah. in the, uh, the <laughs> waiting room? Oh. Yeah, actually, no, that's a good idea. No, oh! There's an old lady walking the hallway with with like a monitor on a stand. Did you do great? We do. Did you hear that? Yes. Or no. Oh. Go ahead and roll an insight die. Both of you. 
Okay. What, what, what's, what's your number? Nice. No, legit. Yeah. Okay. You got a one? <gasps> oh, but the you cop, were right? Crazy. Mentally is rock solid. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, meh. <laughs> solid like a rock. That means I jump up straight up to four, right? Or I go so to you were at two. Okay, so I go to three. Okay. So I'm still at three. Because I rolled a one. The woman who's coming, walking the hallway, has this really vacant stare over her face. And she looks over at you. Don't you want to come to the Yagath Society? Stand frozen in place? Marjan has never heard that. No, nope, he? no, probably. I don't think so. No. Because he had just the one vision. I'm going to back up and uh, grab on... What are you wearing? T-shirt and jeans. I'm going to grab onto your T-shirt for dear life and say the voice. It's the voice. What? Yeah, that sounds weird. What is it? Exact same voice I heard on the phone. It starts moving faster. The lady moves, is yep. moving faster? A little less of a shuffle and more purposeful. Towards us? Yup. She picks up the pole and turns it sideways. Let's get out of here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> now she's running. Please tell me you're carrying. Nope. Run. <laughs> she's about 15 feet away from me. Oh, run. Running. Where are we running to? Cool. Roll out your the, dice. Out the door. Human, and also you've worked up some pretty good leg muscles from riding your bike to deliver pizza. So go ahead and roll two die. Occupation for occupation as a cop. You yeah. gotta be fast. Five and five. All right. Well, I got a four. Then cool. No so inside today. You take <laughs> off running like crazy fast, and you're right behind. Where are you running to? Now you can figure all this out. Are we running out of the hospital? Are we running? running out of the hospital? Yes. We didn't establish how far away the hospital was from Adrian's place. It's a couple miles away. How uh, far was the hospital from the library? I was headed back to the hospital to inform Bon about the craziness about the meteorological event. It's a mile away. I mean, have I made it back to the hospital by the time they? You can run. Odd. <sighs> I didn't know what die he was going to roll. <laughs> Marzin would actually suggest we got to run back to Adrian's place where my vehicle is. Okay. So you're fucking in the... Back to where this all started? Which is closer? That or the police station? I would imagine the police station is closer. Well, then, then that's where he would go. Okay. The police station's not too far from the library. You like to keep civic buildings close together. You're running towards the police station slash library, and you see the orange beetle tootling on by. Do, 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 do I do, see do, them? Go ahead and roll me a die. <laughs> <Sorry, yeah. laughs> yes, you see them. Okay, so I whip the beetle. <laughs> 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 and drifting with. beetle. Yeah. This is called the Berlin drift. <laughs> I pull up very put puddly. You guys, you guys need a ride? I just learned some crazy stuff. You're gonna want to hear this. Uh, we're gonna want to get out of here. Okay, we'll get in. Floor it. <laughs> As we start driving away, I start telling them. So the laboratory that Ellis mentioned. Meteorological event. They're aliens. What? The, 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 the TV head guys. They're aliens. The waxy people. Ellis, he was waxy. They're aliens. Trust me. I'm going to take you to the alien hideout. Uh, police station. Alien hideout first. Police station. I'm driving. You go where I say. This sounds like a conflict. A conflict. It does sound like a conflict. It does. <laughs> Taco Bell. <laughs> On the way. <laughs> Do I have to roll for Taco Bell? <laughs> yeah, yes, actually you do. If you're if you're saying that as a legitimate option between police station, alien crash what? site, I didn't get any vending machine food. There is no way that Marston would allow Taco Bell <laughs> to happen. <laughs> Just pulls up. What are we ordering? Everybody roll a die. I'm trusting what? Jordan's die. <laughs> Nice. No way. Nope. <laughs> well, I, I guess you can't really beat a six. We're going to Taco Bell. 
I feel like I have to say in character. And if Jason is going to say, all right, we're going to talk about, Mars going to be like, stop, <laughs> let me out. We're going to talk about on the way to the crash site. I uh, No, honestly, Marsden would try to exit the vehicle. Go ahead and make me a trooper roll on that one, because, yeah. you know, you've been trained to get out of a, a moving vehicle. Oh, he would actually physically try to stop the vehicle first. He would actually physically try to fight to... Okay. Stop oh, like vehicle. throw punches, fight. Or just pick up his leg, stick it over in there, and jam on the brake himself. Okay. He probably gets two where I get one. Yeah, we can do it that way. That sounds fair. I mean, I see because you, you are physically stronger. You You're are a police officer. <laughs> <gasps> Six. That's my first one of the night. <laughs> so the vehicle stops. For not going to the police station. I'm getting out. All right, fine, fine. Can we go after? You see the old lady coming up in the, in the back mirror, running. With a flapping open hospital gown. Go, go, go! <laughs> My eyes! <laughs> My child eyes! He's gonna move his foot over and press on the gas himself. <laughs> the engine starts to over rev because it's still in first gear. Oh, it's a stupid. Old VW, of course it is. Gosh. Just move your foot, let me drive! He moves his foot. Okay. Okay, now I'm driving. Yes. I'll just starve, I guess. It's okay. It's okay. You're going to die anyway. <gasps> oh, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Check your fanny pack. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Jeff. Yes? It's dark in the back of that truck, and you ride for quite a while. I'm afraid to do anything. You're just kind of petrified. Yeah, just is he still petrified. wrapped up by the person? Yes. By like, the blanket it's, monster. It's like, so the... The, <laughs> the blanket monster. <laughs> <laughs> the blanket monster has let go of you. Like, it, the wings are no longer wrapped around you. You can hear something like the muffled echoing breathing of the person whose head is inside the... Just gonna have my eyes tight shut and, like, rocking back and forth a little bit. And you're wrapped up in this fibrous musky fungusy smelling tendrils that are just like I'm just trying to ignore that I'm alive at the moment yep and you can tell that it's it's going off the main roads and it's a really bumpy ride and you know it's a box truck it doesn't really have that much in terms of shocks so you're just kind of bouncing around and getting buffeted pretty hard and it goes for a while and then there's like a sharp left hand turn and then you start going down, and there's like this real echoey noise all around you. The, the engine is echoing, reverberating against... Like a tunnel? Yeah. But it's still rough. Oh, yes. So it's probably a cave. <laughs> <laughs> what makes you think that? So you go down into the cave. We'll just call a cave a cave. The door opens. It's dim inside, but there is some light. It's all like the light of CRT television oh. turned on. Not warm or happy at all. Very harsh. And you can hear noises. I don't want to know. I'm going to start struggling. I like that idea. Go ahead and roll me a human die. And roll me your insanity die. What's your number on insanity? Or your insight? Still a five. Still a five. Five. Your struggle doesn't go well. And you start hearing this... It sounds arachnoid. <laughs> Pointed legs skittering over something. Multiple legs. And you can hear conversations in this twisted garb. I start struggling harder. Okay. Four and a two. Okay. You're not breaking out. These crab-like things start swarming towards you over up into the truck and there are these nasty things they're about a good three feet wide and their legs make them stand at about four and a half feet tall their pictures are about as long as my elbow from my elbow to the top of my hand they also have other appendages that they can use to manipulate things sending out these tendrils and then they have giant fat like wings and they're coming at, towards you, looking at you with multiple eyes on stalks. 
Ooh. And they're coming at you from all the different angles. Some are coming from the floor, some are coming along the side of the truck. Some are coming from the ceiling. I'm just going to start screaming. That sounds like a good place to transition away from you. Back to the Taco Bell crew. So you're taking them to the site of where Th- you... That is my plan. Okay. That's your plan. Not the police station? No. Yeah. Okay, so you guys... Are- I, I mean, are you still arguing and... Yeah. I would still argue for the police station. Okay. And I keep saying that we're going to, to the site. Can the police fight aliens? I mean, seriously. Think of it. Aliens. This is so cool. <laughs> I mean, in like, a terrifying kind of way. We have no way to combat these aliens. Do you really think we could anyway? I mean, they're aliens. What would you do to combat an alien? So why are we rushing to them? To prove that they're aliens! But we've seen these aliens take over people. So they're going to take us over and we'll have nothing, no one to prove anything to. Except to ourselves, that we're not crazy. Don't you want to not be crazy? Yes, I want to not be crazy so and go to the police station. Valid. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to just go ahead and stop you right here. Because there's a chain of blue coverall TV Ted people standing in a line across the road holding hands. Red Rover, Red Rover! <laughs> Send the orange beetle over! <laughs> <laughs> and all of their heads turn on into the same white snow static. Reverse! Reverse! I mean, is there a way around them first? And well, then, yeah, is I the would... lady still chasing us? Just no. plow straight through them. <sighs> what does the cops say? I mean, because that would be vehicular manslaughter. Yes. So he would say reverse. Alright, so I've tried to avoid them somehow, whether that's backing up I actually do. If I have enough space, I'm going to swing around. Because are we at a four-way intersection at all? We are at a four-way intersection. So yeah, I would see. Go ahead and roll for that. <laughs> <laughs> what am I rolling? You're just rolling one. It's not two. You can look around, and you're not on a four-way intersection. You're actually on a very fairly remote part of the road. <laughs> there are no street lights. It's down to two lanes. It's far away from the station. Okay, so I'm going to swing around and try to go the other direction. Another line appears. Oh my gosh. I'm going to... They got they out there quick. They start walking <laughs> towards each other. Collapsing it down. What's to the, the side of the road? Gallery over here. Another oh, line of quick. people. So we are boxed in by lines of people. Correct. Okay. I'm driving into them. Okay. Hold tight. And then I floor it. Go ahead and roll me two. Two regular, two regular dice for this. <coughs> six. Oh, six. That's great. Roll an inside die. It was a two. As you rev towards them, the people break hands. Some go to the left. To the left. Some <laughs> go to the right. To the right. <laughs> and some <laughs> crisscross. <laughs> Some jump straight up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> and they land on the roof of the car. How close are we to the crash site? To the TV tower? You can see it from where you are. Okay. I'm, you know, making my way there with the guy on top. Like three of them on top. All right. Okay. You're just driving defensively. Yeah, you know, trying to keep them... Well, I've seen movies with this. I know what I'm doing. Sure, go ahead. Roll one die. No, roll two die. Because I've seen movies? Yep. Six! (laughs) I got all the sixes tonight. Why can't I roll like this with Sam? Go ahead and roll my inside die. Two! (laughs) Roll this inside die. (laughs) So you're able to keep the car from flipping over. So still booking it. And you're heading towards the, the TV, uh, tower. TV tower. There's a little dirt road off to the side. And a box truck comes up the dirt road and starts heading the opposite direction from where you came. I don't know if the box truck would mean anything to me. Unless there's anything weird about the box truck. I mean, it's driving with its lights off. I think I might comment on that. Okay. The idiot's driving without lights on. Meanwhile, Marston is searching frantically in the car. It's like, do you have at least a flare gun in here or something? No. Guns kill people. Exactly. 
I'm opposed to personally owned firearms. We could use something to defend ourselves at this point, seeing as we're heading towards aliens that I think wish to attack us. I have a tire iron in the back. In the front. In yeah. the front. That's it. I'm going to climb out the window, up to the front, and get the tire iron out. Sounds great. There are three on top. Have fun. Go ahead and roll me one die. I'm going to oppose this. Okay. <laughs> Are you just going to grab me by yeah. the collar? I'm driving. I can't do it. Yeah. Because she's trying to roll down. He's Miss. trying to roll down the window next to your head. Five. Four. Grabs the, the window crank. It's like, kid, that is not a smart idea. Well, nobody's coming up with any good ideas around here. God, I did. Head to the police station. <laughs> so are we pulling up to the TV tower? Yeah. I slam on the brakes and try to you know, throw the TV guys off. Okay, that sounds like you need to make me a two for roll. And it's a six. Now it's a five. So you slam on the brakes and the creatures fly off. The TV screens like crack as they like hit onto everything and the glass starts falling out. You see like these large metal tubes kind of jam to the side. And then you also see these eye stalks poking through. There's no head. Go ahead and roll. Everybody roll in their inside die. Yeah. Didn't mean to. <gasps> so tell me your number. Four. It, and then it would jump up to four. You're going crazy. Tell me your number. I rolled a five, okay. and I was a four. You're really going crazy. I rolled a three. Join in the club. And I was a three. <laughs> nice. Ah. So Marson, Marson immediately pipes up and is like, there's your proof. Go to the police station. We have proof now. That's what you wanted. Let's go. Get out of here. <clears throat> Are they still moving? Yes, they're standing up. They're coming towards you. <sighs> but I mean, we need proof to take back. What? Okay, we saw stuff. They haven't believed anything we've seen yet. We need one of them in my car that we can take with us to show. We will take you to proof. No, we will take you to proof. Just right. ram them over! Let us in and we'll show you the way. No, we'll let you in and then we'll take you where we want you to go. We want to go to the same place. One of them is right next to the door, the, the driver's side door. It goes to open the handle. Oh it's locked. So this tendril comes in and like penetrates like the corner and it starts growing down towards the lock and it like circles around the knob of the top. <gasps> I slip, drive. Back, I slip it back down and I drive. And start driving. Okay, go ahead and roll me one die. <laughs> Five. Okay. So you're driving just fine. <laughs> but you start smelling something. Oh, uh, yeah. What does it smell like? Gasoline. Because only one was by the window. The other one was what? puncturing your gas tank. Oh. Guys, I think we have a problem. What's that smell? Is that... It's gas. Ga oh, no. What happened? We didn't go to the police station. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I still say the police wouldn't have done anything for us. For one... Well, he hasn't if, done if, anything for us. Right? And imagine if there were dozens of him. We could have been at Taco Bell right now. I need to change the answer to the closest I've come to murder. <laughs> <laughs> so... As the gas gauge is like getting lower and lower and lower, I try to find a place I can pull off into the woods and kind of stash the car. There's a cop to trees a little bit further down the road, yes. How far have we driven from the city? <laughs> you see no traffic lights, no... Uh, is that the only stand of trees? That you can see. We can stash the car over there in those trees, and we'll head back to the police station. Or we can just leave it here on the side of the road and start walking up the road where we saw those TV heads. I leave it up to you two. <sighs> Going back there is not a good idea. Well, for once we agree on something. So where are we going? I'm going to the police station. I don't care what you guys do. Does it pull off? Okay. And then he gets out and starts walking. Actually jogging. And you hear as he disappears off into the darkness, he's like, When's the last time y'all did a 10K? <sighs> Go ahead and roll me two investigation dice. Myself? Yep. I'm a six. <laughs> so you're able to stash the car just fine. 
And as you're looking around in the darkness, you have a little bit of light left from the battery from the from the car, right? Okay. You're looking around, and this looks awfully familiar to the the news articles you were looking up about the crash. Like this stand of trees. Right. It was not too far away from the site that the, the meteor went down. This is it. This is it. This is where the aliens are. What are you talking about? That's just a bunch of trees. No, th- this is like the, where the news article about the aliens, about the, the, the event, the thing, hit here. So then where are they? I don't know. they got to be around here somewhere. Well, let's look around. Okay. Okay, go ahead and make me a super roll, both of you. Because we're looking for aliens. No, I don't want this one. Who's? Threes. You do remember from the photos in the article, if you head down the, the road a little bit, you should find the, the, the site where the meteor went down. And as you're walking along, we'll go ahead and pause there a little bit. Thank you for listening to Bone Thrower's Theater. We are releasing this podcast under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 3.0 unported license. That means you can share the podcast, but please do not modify it or try to gain financially from it. If you would like to visit our website, you can do so at bonethrowerstheater.com. If you would like to send us an email, you can do so at bonethrowerstheater at gmail.com. Our Twitter handle is bonethrowerstheater. You can also look us up on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And until next time, may the bones fall ever in your favor. This has been a Nerd Circle podcast production.